This is an example demonstrating the universal generalization rule. We call it barber. The story is this. Whenever we have a barber and a person who needs a haircut, then that barber can cut the hair of the person who needs a haircut. We can conclude that any barber who needs a haircut could cut his or her own hair. Let's begin by defining these predicates. B of x means x is a barber. H of x means x needs a haircut. And C of x and y means x can cut the hair of y. From the story and these predicates, we may represent the premise as for all x, for all y, if b of x and h of y, then c of x and y. In English, that is, whenever we have a barber and a person who needs a haircut, then that barber can cut the hair of the person who needs a haircut. The conclusion we seek is for all z, if b of z and h of z, then c of z and z. That is, any barber who needs a haircut could cut his or her own hair. Once again, symbolically, the premise is for all x, for all y, if b of x and h of y, then c of x and y. The conclusion is for all z, if b of z and h of z, then c of z and z. So how would we construct a proof of this? If we look at the conclusion, it looks very similar to the premise. In fact, the difference is that the premise has two universal quantifications for all x and for all y, and the conclusion has a single universal quantification for all z. If we think about this, however, we see that the premise should hold for any x and y to give us c applying to that x and y. There is no restriction that the x and the y must be different. They could be the same. And being the same is what we want. So what we're going to do in this situation is universally instantiate both the x and the y to the same arbitrary element then universally generalize from that same arbitrary element. If you would like to complete the proof on your own, please pause this video now. We begin the proof by listing the single premise on line 1, that is, for all x and for all y, if b of x and h of y, then c of x and y. Now we first instantiate the x to a, a symbol for an arbitrary element. We obtain on line 2 for all y, b of a and h of y implies c of a and y. Now we again instantiate, this time y, to the same arbitrary element a to obtain on line 3 b of a and h of a imply c of a and a. Finally, we generalize the arbitrary element a in line 3 to a universal z to say on line 4, for all z if b of z and h of z, then c of z and z. This concludes the proof.